Yeah, it's a, it's a perfect day. Uh, maybe not a perfect day to be out in the garden, though. If you want to be out there, you probably got to be out there this morning. Yeah, absolutely. Cooler. Absolutely. I'll tell you, the, the warm weather, you know, we were telling everybody, don't worry about watering because it's been cool, but now it's getting hot. We do have to water. But keep in mind, we were talking to Cheryl just before we went on the air, you know, hydrangeas are a perfect example of a plant that if you go out in the middle of the day, they look wilted and you feel like you need to water them. But many yeah. times the soil is still damp. It's just that they're losing more water through the foliage that they can, than they can take up at one time. So if you do have hydrangeas uh, and you know you water them one or two days earlier, then wait till late that evening and check them and see if they didn't perk up on their own. Don't just necessarily go out and water every day because then you're going to have problems with overwater. Exactly, yeah. And there's a couple of questions kind of relating to uh, what we're just kind of talking about here. And one is, uh, here's one question. They have treated their grass twice with weed and feed and they still have weeds. How do they get that weed-free line? Right. Uh, the, the best way to control weeds is to spray directly on the weed. I prefer liquid weed killers to the weed and feeds. The problem with the weed and feed products is, particularly the granular ones, the only way you kill anything is to come in direct contact with the foliage. And when you're doing a granular product, it's very difficult to get that granule to land on every weed in the yard. Yeah. Plus the fact you're putting weed and feed where you don't have weeds, so you really don't need the weed killer. So I always recommend to uh, use a liquid, go out wherever you see weed spray, and that gives you, and it's a little bit more economical, so it gives you an opportunity to go out multiple times with, the, with uh, minimum amount, because weeds are going to germinate all summer long. You're going to have one group of weeds now, but in four to six weeks you have another cycle of weeds, so you're going to have some come up, but where you don't have them, there's no reason to spray. Yeah, exactly. I can more spot treatment. Right, is what you're exactly. Saying. Yes, yeah. yes. And then a uh, question here by Don. She has spots on her apple tree. The leaves are turning yellow. What can she do? That probably is a rust, and there are fungicides you can use. I would recommend that she take a sample in to her favorite garden center and let them take a look at it. Uh, with the cool weather we had earlier, there are some uh, leaf spots that we do get, but there are, there are some natural fungicides that can be used uh, to prevent it from spreading further. Okay, and then uh, another question here, how do you keep the deer away from roses? Right. Yeah, That's tough. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, there, there are a lot of commercial products on the market. Uh, there's deer off, deer scram, the list goes on. Uh, I think that the granular products tend to work a little bit better than the liquid, particularly in the spring, because what happens if you spray the foliage with the liquid, then in 30 days you have more new growth, and there's no spray on that, where if you do a granular product, you can go around the perimeter of the plant. And even, I've even heard some of the home remedies, even human hair will work. Oh. Uh, so, you know, I, I don't know, but I've, I've heard different things, and so of course, cayenne yeah. pepper. Right. It, it, in fact, that one of the, the barber that I go to, a lot of people come pick that hair up, and they make their own little formula with some cayenne pepper, some hair, Ooh. and different things, and okay. sprinkle that around. Hey, so. if you want to keep your roses looking nice, I guess <laughs> you'll do anything. But uh, do you have some stuff in here, yes. too, on yeah. uh, set? What's this all about, the well, hummingbird feeder here, too? Well, you know, with the hot weather, hummer, the hummingbirds are here, so you want to get your feeder out, put plants out that attract them, such as this. This is a tropical... Penta, uh, any tubular flower works well in bright color. Reds, purples, uh, the sal there's perennial salvias that you can use. Yeah. Uh, this, of course, is considered an annual, but the main thing was to get people in, that, in thinking about hummingbirds. And, of course, the feeders, you can uh, buy commercial sugar water to put in there. You make your own. I use, I just use one part sugar, four parts water. Uh, you know, get it hot so it dissolves well. But keep in mind, if you do make your own, you have to change it periodically because it will go rancid in these temperatures. Yeah, and then the one thing I've had a problem with too, when I was a kid, my uh, my parents had hummingbird feeder. They had uh, there's a lot of bees that came with right. that, especially wasps. How do you keep those away? Well, that's what this particular one has. Those little yellow things are bee guards, so the bees oh. can't get to it. They can't get to the sweet right. Stuff. The other thing too, you you may have a problem with our ants coming up the pole where yeah. you have it hanging. And you can buy <laughs> ant guards, or you can make an ant guard. And basically, what an ant guard is is you do something an inverted saucer, so they can't crawl down into that. They can't make it down into the food. Right. Okay. Yeah. All yeah. right. Well, thanks a lot for coming uh, in this morning, Debbie. Appreciate it. And if you missed anything, or you want to see this again, we'll have the full video of this interview on Wavy.com. We'll be back with more right after this.